NFL. Keenan Allen goes to the Chicago Bears for a fourth round pick. A fourth round pick. If Caleb ends up going there, there are going to be some weapons there. What about Justin? What about Justin what about Fields. Justin? Justin Fields. What, what you think he's you think he's going to stay there? They still have him. Well, already I, fold, already sold out Caleb. Well, I mean, it, what it, would you do? Would you go Justin or Caleb? I would probably go Caleb for two reasons. Number one, I don't think that Justin Fields is a pocket quarterback, and I don't think that it, he once he turns his back to the defense, I think he has a really difficult time. I agree. You know, he turns his back to the defense way too often. Mm-hmm. Um, number two, there's a financial component. They're, they're not in win now mode. Now they've right. made acquisitions that have made their team better. They've been so bad for so long. You have to give Justin Fields either the fifth year option or renegotiate or do right. something so after just, this year. You so now you're just the resetting the quarterback yeah. financials and and running it back. Now I think there's a lot of pressure on the head coach, um, Matt Eberflus, uh, who I I don't know I don't know if he's good or not. I think their defense got better. Uh, obviously the yeah. Montez Sweat acquisition was an excellent one. I like their defense. But I look at where they're at and and then I look at like value of quarterbacks. I think I think the Bears valued Justin Fields higher than the rest of the league did. Right. The league told you Matt Jones, who had a better individual season than anything Justin Fields has done mm-hmm. and he's been bad the last couple but that right. first year was good he went for what a sixth yeah so the value on, and Trey Lance went for like what a fifth I believe at yeah, the time I, whatever the value is a late round pick right that's the value. And so thinking that you're gonna get third or second round pick or anyone thinking yeah. they're gonna get a first round pick I I mean come on the league is telling you that that's well, not what that man is worth well I bring that up because Keenan Allen goes there for a fourth round pick. And whether Justin Fields is a quarterback or not, I think the Bears are in a great spot. They have number one pick and a number nine overall pick. I think it's awesome. They're in a great spot. I, I really like what the Bears are doing. The Niners aren't having the sexiest all season so far. It's only a week, if that, five days. But I do like what they're doing. I do like the Millie College pickup from the Houston Texans, giving up one of your 11 draft picks, and it was a, uh, the first of their seventh round picks. I'm not mad at that. So they have 10 picks left, the 49ers, that is. There's a lot of smoke. There's a lot of rumors going on. One was Debo Samuel and Jason Lacafora, uh brought up there with Debo Samuel. Hey, Baltimore called, and would they be inclined to trade Debo Samuel because of the IE situation? And Eric DeCosta, the GM of the Ravens, debunked that right away, said, yeah, that's not true. Now, I don't know where that report came from. But now there's smoke about Brendan Ayuk going to Jacksonville. The Jacksonville radio station, sports radio station, was bringing it up like, hey, Jack, Brendan Ayuk has... You know, he's he's filling Jacksonville. Now, Brendan Ike is a West Coast guy, right? Went to Arizona State, went to Sierra Junior College, grew up in, uh, where did he grow up in? Reno? Yeah, Reno, I believe. He's in the Play here in the Bay, Bay Area. Like, what intrigues him about Jacksonville? Uh, less state taxes for eight games a year? I don't know. I, 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 yeah, I'm, I, I'm literally, yeah, no, I'm literally no, I just... I know. I, just keep going. No, yeah, I just, yeah. just, just maybe he's just done with the situation. You know, maybe he wants to try something new. I... I I don't know. There's been different points in my life where others have thought that things were perfectly fine with where I was at, and I wasn't. I wasn't happy. I. I don't know. Maybe he's seeking, um, you know, more of being the focal point of the passing right. game. Like if he goes well, to Jacksonville, I don't I, think he's the focal point of the Jacks uh, passing game. Who is Christian Kirk? That's Trevor Lawrence's favorite target. Well, until and you until get, gets there. Well, did you get Evan Ingram? And he's got over a hundred catches. Okay. Like, Calvin really came to Jacksonville, and everybody thought, oh, man, Calvin Ridley's going to explode. Oh, man, Trevor Lawrence has all these weapons. And he went back to Evan Ingram and Christian Kirk. And their downfall, the Jacksonville Jaguars, their downfall came, <clears throat> pardon me, when Christian Kirk got hurt in that Monday Night Football game against Cincinnati. That was it for them. So I'm just, we're just having a conversation. I mean, Bonte, you Ayuk. can't tell me in one sentence that you think Brandon Ayuk is a clear-cut, bona fide number one, and then tell me that On Christian- his team. On his team. And he, I do believe he's a number one receiver. Okay. But Christian Kirk has been very, very good for the Jacksonville right. Jaguars. Well, both can't and be report, true simultaneously. What do you mean both can't be well, true? Well, you can't say I'm that just, Christian Kirk's on the same level of Ayuk when you've been touting I'm not that Ayuk has been I, excellent. I didn't say that. Well, then what Eddie, you, you're putting words in my well, mouth. What I'm I didn't saying, say I, that. I said that Christian Kirk and Evan Egram are Trevor Lawrence's favorite targets. They traded for Calvin Ridley, uh-huh. and everybody thought, oh, boy, well, Ridley Calvin also. Ridley's going to be the number one target. Oh, man, blew it up in Atlanta, tore it up. He's coming off a suspension. He's a deep route, blah, 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 blah. And Christian Kirk and Evan Egram ball out with Trevor Lawrence. So I, I, he could be a number one down to Jacksonville. I'm just, from what my eyes tell me, Trevor Lawrence loves Christian Kirk, and he loves Evan Egram. So I it, it have, one has nothing to do with the other. I'm just trying to figure out why, why would a rumor about Brandon Ayuk wanting to go to Jacksonville come out? 
out of all places. I'm hypothesizing, you know, Jack- like Jacksonville. I'm, I, I don't know. I'm hypothesizing, and and you know, maybe he has a bitter taste in his mouth. I can't speak on half on behalf of right. Brandon Ayuk, but clearly his family had put out things immediately after the Super Bowl that made it indicate to me that they weren't happy. That doesn't mean things can't be, uh, you know, mended, but. You know, Debo Samuel lost his mind during the offseason and unfollowed everyone on social media. Uh, and then he he got the big payday and he came back and he did a hold in. So I don't know what's going on. I think this could be a leverage play from Brandon Ayuk's camp to try to, hey, we've got interest all around the league. Right. If you're not going to pay me $25 million a year or whatever his number is, look at these other teams that are lining up for him. Maybe, you know, again, I'm hypothesizing here. Maybe the Niners said, hey, gauge your interest. Good. See, see what's out there. I I don't know. How is it not tampering? That's what I want to know. Well, everybody tampers. I mean, <laughs> memo to every I, I know, sports league saying, out there. Yeah, He's not a free every, agent. Every league, every league, all these players, especially with cell phones and agents and GMs and all the really, everybody's tampering. Everybody's texting each other during the season. Everybody's tampering. Kyrie Irving was tampering with Kevin Durant when Kevin Durant was playing with the Warriors in his final season. They were all texting left and right, vacationing together, all that stuff. So, I... Look, Brendan Ayuk is what is he worth? He is worth what the team tells him he's worth, or what they, whatever money they give him. What do you but think he I, thinks he's worth? But I, I don't know. I don't want to speak for I him. I think he thinks I, he's worth better than 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 Calvin Ridley. Yeah, he probably is. Yeah, I don't want to speak for him, but I would rather have Brendan Ayuk than Calvin. Ridley. I would too. That's my thing. And then the other would the other aspect of this is why would the Niners want to trade Brendan Ayuk when Jarmich came out of the NFL Combine and said. We're building this thing around Brock Purdy. So why would you take a weapon away from Brock Purdy? To draft a young wide receiver? I'm taking proven talent over prospects any day of the week. That's my philosophy in baseball. That's my philosophy in the NFL. I know wide receivers are making a quicker adjustment to the league. I know they are. But now you got to learn the shed ahead system, which they say is very complex. you got to run block. How many college wide receivers are out there run blocking their ass off like Brandon Ayuk? I don't think there's many. I don't, think, I don't even know if they're asked. I don't even think they're asked to do that. You know what I'm saying? How many wide receivers have the Niners taken since T.O.? A lot. Like 50? A lot. A like lot. seriously. And, and not five, not five. one of them is a premier route runner. Right. In the era of we could find wide receivers by shaking the tree. Mm-hmm. Not this organization. And then I look at the Debo thing and whether Debo's a pure wide receiver or a football player or whatever, like the fact that they finally landed both of these guys, it makes me very reluctant to move off those guys. Yeah. But... What's the thought process behind it? You're saying, oh, they want to build around Purdy. Is there a financial component? This is what I've been kind of alluding to regarding Dak Prescott and his contract. When you are gearing up to pay somebody 40 or $50 million, you can't afford everyone. Is this a premature move to offset some money and get cheaper at the skill position while you know gearing yourself up to oh. pay uh, Brock Purdy? I, I th- <laughs> I think I want to see another year of the two of the guys together before I make that decision. Yeah, but not, I don't know, man. I, I'm not doing that. I, I can't do that. Do, I, doing what? I, trading Brett and I, you just to trade him for one pick or two pick. I don't even know what the compensation package would be. I don't. I really don't. But I'm looking at Kansas City trade for Hollywood Brown last night. I'm thinking, damn. Damn, another weapon from Holmes. And you see Hollywood Brown shared a text message thread with Andy Reid. He goes, huh, Red Diamonds. I'm just like, damn. <laughs> I'm like, here comes Kansas City. And I got to keep up with Kansas City. If I'm, I'm thinking like Kyle Shanahan, mm-hmm. I have to keep up with Kansas City. I have to keep up with the Philadelphia Eagles. I have to keep up with the Detroit Lions. I have to keep up with the Green Bay Packers. Why would I be, why would the 49ers, and 888 957 9570, make it make sense? Well, why should they even entertain trade talks for Brendan Ayuk? You need to add weapons in the Super Bowl. I'm thinking we need one more guy. I, I'm with you. I'm not trying to trade a playmaker who's proven who was 36 in targets and number one in yards per catch. Like, that doesn't make sense to me, Shasky. It no. just doesn't. I, I got to pay the man his money. I'll figure out what's going on with mm-hmm. D-Boy, run it back, and eat the bullet this year with the money with Brendan Ayuk. And then if I got to move off one of these guys next year, specifically Debo Samuel, did I do that? I, I don't agree with this. I want to say that on the front end. The only really logical thing that I can come up with, it's one of these two things. Ayuk is done playing here. Like, that's, you know, but he's just done, and they know that. Or B, they're moving money around because they can't afford yeah. everyone. Like, what other... It's not that he's not a good player. He is a good... Wouldn't you agree? Right. He's a great player. Yeah. And so, I... 
Well, I he's a very, very good player. I'm not going to say great. I don't want to throw great out there, but very good player. I think at times he played great this year. I, I'm with you. I think I think he had an awesome year, right? And and I want to see another year of Brock Purdy and Brandon Ayuk. Like, if you were just draft, for example, you were talking about the Bears, and what are they doing, right? They're going to draft a quarterback. Well, I think in part why Justin Fields struggled is they didn't have weapons. Right. They didn't have weapons his first couple of years. Like, just straight up. Like, he may not be good, but I would also say the talent around him wasn't great. No. When you draft a quarterback, it's... Get him weapons, protect that man. And so I look at Brock Purdy, it's like, all right, we have weapons. Why mm -hmm. would I want to create another hole? The only mm -hmm. reason I would want to create another hole is because I financially can't afford everyone and I need to get cheaper at that particular position. That's the only, it's really the only thing I can think right. of. Because to me, there's no X's and O football reason right. to get rid of Brandon Ayuk. Right, no, I'm I'm, I'm, I'm with you. So I'm, I, I don't know if Ayuk wants out. I don't know. He's a West Coast guy. Why would he want to leave? Now,